Hey there, Henry Johnson scholars. Mr. Shaw here again for our next edition of virtual art class at HJCS. Today, we're gonna to be learning about one of my favorite artists, an artist whose name is Alma Thomas. Uh, sometimes people refer to her with her middle name, Alma Woodsy Thomas. And she, here she is, uh, is a very, very well-known female black artist from the 1940s, 50s, and 60s. And all of her work is really, really beautiful, but also really interesting because it's a special type of artwork called abstract art. Can everybody say that for me? Say abstract art. Oh, I only heard about half of you. Let's try that again. This time, I want you to kind of sing it to me. Uh, if your parents hear you singing to the computer, just tell them that your art teacher is crazy. Uh, I want you to sing that word abstract art go ahead fantastic thank you for those of you who did that with me now abstract art is artwork that doesn't really look like anything here is one of alma thomas's paintings and as you can see it's not really a painting of anything it's not a painting of a person it's not a painting of a tree it looks a little bit like the sun except it's rainbow colored what it really is, is just a bunch of shapes and colors. Take a really, really close look at that picture. What shape did Alma Thomas use over and over again to make that picture? Yeah, it's made up of squares. And those squares are arranged in circular shapes, getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger as the picture goes on. So that entire picture is filled and Alma Thomas is really, really good at filling up all of that negative space in her picture. But since her pictures don't really have a subject, the entire thing is negative space. And when we look at a picture like this and we only see colors and shapes and it doesn't really look like anything, we call that abstract. Now, this picture happens to have some beautiful rainbow colors and I really, really like the way that it looks and the way that those circles make me feel. And that's one of the most important things that abstract art can do. Sometimes it's hard to draw a picture of a feeling or it's hard to show someone happiness or sadness or sleepiness even. But an abstract picture sometimes is much, much better at making you feel a certain way. Even though it doesn't look like something, it can definitely make you feel something or it can make you think something. Hey, listen! Ooh. I'm sorry, that was my phone. <laughs> um, let's take a look at this one right here. Um, now, what do you notice that's different about this picture? Take a look at it. Mm. If you said that those shapes are now going in straight lines, kind of like stripes going up and down, you're absolutely right. Now take a really, really close look and what are some things that are kind of the same about it? What do you notice that she did for this painting that was the same as the last one we looked at. Do you see those rainbow colors that I see? Those colors definitely are the same. Now this picture has a lot more blue, but I'm definitely seeing that same idea of a rainbow being repeated here. And Alma Thomas loved to make pictures that utilized all of the colors. That means she really liked to use all the colors of the rainbow. Now, while she made this one with little tiny shapes all through the pictures, they don't look like perfect squares like the first one did, but we get the same effect. It almost looks like rainbow stripes being made of all these little shapes kind of stuck in together next to each other in those nice straight lines. Now, what if Alma Thomas took that same idea, painting a picture with the same repeated shape over and over again, but this time, ooh, this time it kind of looks like something, doesn't it? Take a look at this painting. What do you think it looks like? What does it remind you of? Now, it might not look exactly like that, but when I look at this picture, it looks kind of like mountains. And I almost see some shapes up there that look like they might be the sun. And based on the colors I see in the sky, maybe it's early in the morning, the sunrise, or maybe later in the evening when the sun is coming down. I can tell because the colors in the sky are those yellows and reds and pinks and oranges. We typically don't see those in the middle of the day, but very early in the morning and later on in the evening, we see those colors in the sky and that's what this picture reminds me of. 
Now, does it look exactly like a mountain during a sunset or a sunrise? Not quite. And that's because Alma Thomas painted this entire picture with all of these little rectangles. They almost look like bricks in a giant brick wall, and each of them are a different color. But when those colors and those shapes are put together, it makes us think of a landscape, of a picture of that mountain with the sun setting behind it. Whoa, look at this one. <coughs> Excuse me. Make sure you cough into your elbow if you ever need to. Um, now, this has some things that are the same about it and some things that are really, really different. What do you see that's the same? What's something about this picture that you've noticed in all of Alma, Alma Thomas's pictures so far? Are you thinking of those rainbow colors? I am too. What do you see that's different though? What's something that you notice that's really, really different in this picture? Take a look. Do you see all of those really interesting shapes? This is one of Alma Thomas's paintings where she doesn't repeat the exact same shape over and over. I see squares and I see triangles and I see circles. Some of them are exactly the right kind of shape. Some of them are curved and twisted around, but they all kind of fit in with each other. And she still has that idea of the rainbow colors going all the way through her picture. Now I'm gonna show you one more and I want you to see what's really different about this and what's really the same. Take a look at this picture. Now, even though this entire picture was all painted in red, what would make you think that this is still an Alma Thomas painting? Hmm. What do you think? Is it all of those little tiny shapes kind of squeezed in next to each other? almost touching, but not quite touching. In this picture, since all of her shapes are the same color, that white negative space, those little tiny lines and spaces in between the red shapes, almost become the most interesting part of the picture. But does it really look like anything? Or is it just a bunch of colors and shapes? Yeah, and that means that this picture is abstract. I definitely feel a certain kind of way when I look at this, and it definitely makes me think of some things, but when I look at it, it doesn't look like any recognizable object. It doesn't look like an apple or a bird or a fish. It just looks like shapes and colors, and that is abstract art. Now, one thing that I do want to share with you about our good friend Alma is as a black artist in the earlier parts of the 20th century in the mid 1900s, Alma Thomas had a really difficult time having her artwork shown in museums. And one of the reasons for that is because she was a black woman. Now, in the 1950s and 1960s, black people and white people had a really, really hard time getting along with each other. It's getting better these days, but it's not quite there. Luckily for us, Alma Thomas and other people um, go out there and express their views. And Alma Thomas in the 1960s, in fact, in 1963, was part of a very, very big event called the March on Washington, D.C. And here's a picture from that event. Now, some of you might recognize this as the place where Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. made his I Have a Dream speech. Well, Alma Thomas was there. She was one of the black men and women who went to fight for equality in the 1960s, and people are still doing that today. What I'd like to show you before I sign off and show you how to make your own abstract picture is a painting she made of that day of the March in Washington. And here it is. Now, if you look at it, it does kind of look like a crowd of people. I can see little tiny faces in there, and I can see that those faces are all different colors, all different hairstyles, all different kinds of people coming together to fight for something that they thought was right. And then we can see the shapes of their signs up in the distance, those big blocky squares. Now, as we look at this, even though it's a picture that's supposed to look like something, it looks like a crowd of people marching in Washington, D.C. for equality. Do you see some things that are the same about her abstract paintings? Do you see squares 
and other abstract shapes just kind of spread out around the picture. Are you seeing all of those different rainbow colors still being represented? So even though this is a picture that's supposed to look like something, it does have some of those abstract features, some of those things that don't quite make it look exactly real. Now, one of the good things about um, those marches in the 1960s is a lot of laws were passed to help with equality. And many, many years later, Alma Thomas was recognized for her hard work, both as an activist and as an artist, when in 2014, while President Barack Obama was the first African-American president to serve in the White House, you can see here a very familiar painting in the White House dining room. And that's because President Barack Obama and his wife, Michelle Obama, while they were living in the White House, got to pick some of the artwork that is hanging up in the White House. And that painting that we see in the White House dining room is actually an Alma Thomas painting. And she is the first black female artist to ever have her artwork hanging in the White House. And that's a really, really exciting thing. And I'm glad that I get to be the one to teach you about Alma Thomas and how she went from an artist who explored her feelings and explored her thoughts with abstract squares and colors to an artist who went out into the streets to fight for equality for her and other black artists and other female artists and the happy ending of her having her artwork shown in one of the most important buildings in our entire country. So I hope you enjoyed learning about Alma Thomas. And if you stay tuned, I'm going to show you how you can make abstract artwork by repeating shapes like squares or rectangles or triangles with all different colors to make someone feel something or think something. And we'll do it two different ways. I'll show you how to do it with the seesaw drawing tools if you're following my lesson from home remotely. Or if you have paper, pencil, and crayons, I'll show you how you can make an abstract picture using those hands-on tools. Stay tuned, and I can't wait to see what you make. All right, scholars. Now that we've learned a little bit about one of my favorite artists, Alma Thomas, a um, famous, famous abstract painter, now you have a chance to create some artwork in the same style as Alma Thomas, to be able to repeat some of those simple shapes over and over using different colors to create your own abstract picture. So if you're in Seesaw, the first thing you want to do is find this assignment. It's called Art Alma Thomas Abstract Painter. I have a nice little pink picture here for you. And you want to click that Add Response button, that green plus. Now, after you've clicked on that, I'm going to choose sample student. I don't want to do work for any of you. Um, you're going to have a lot of options here. We have photo, we have drawing, we have video, a link, note, and upload. Today, we're going to be drawing and painting, so you want to click on that pencil tool, and that'll give you a lot of options about how you'd like to complete this picture. So, once you've clicked the drawing tool, you're going to have a nice blank sheet just like this uh, with nothing else in it. And that's okay. That's exactly where we want to start today. Now, because I'm creating a pattern of shapes, I want to choose a tool that would be really, really good for coloring. Now, all of these tools, except for the eraser, can make marks on your page. You could use this sparkle pen. You can use the highlighter, the regular marker tool, or the pencil. I like to use the regular marker tool because it gives me nice, flat colors, nice, bold images. And the first thing I might want to think about is what shape do I want to repeat over and over to make my pattern? Now, Alma Thomas oftentimes would use squares, and I could create an abstract picture using a pattern of squares. And I could make those squares different colors, but drawing these squares with my mouse and then coloring them in is actually turning out to be a lot of work. So I'm actually going to take a little bit of a shortcut. First, I'm going to choose my eraser tool and erase these squares. And I notice that when I'm choosing my tools, if I choose a big enough size, I think I want to do a little bit bigger, um, my marker tool here is already making a shape that I could use in my patterns. It's making a circle. And all I have to do is click it once. So today, to save myself 
<coughs> excuse me, a little bit of work, I'm just going to make a pattern of circles. And I think this is a good start. I have a nice light blue circle right here in the middle of my paper. But now I need to make that a pattern somehow. Now I could do what Alma Thomas did, and I could have a pattern of circles going in a circular pattern. And as I'm surrounding these circles with more circles, I can change the color slightly and then repeat that pattern going outward all the way around. And this is really easy because all I'm doing is just tapping my paper and then I choose a slightly different color and then I can go all the way around this one. And you can see already this picture is starting to look very interesting. Now it doesn't look like a real thing. It doesn't represent anything. So my picture is definitely abstract. That means it doesn't really look like anything, but it does make me think of something, or maybe it makes me feel something. It's just a bunch of patterns, shapes, and colors. So as I'm doing this, I'm actually changing my color just a little bit, and then I'm repeating that pattern of circles all the way around and around and around. Now, looking at this picture, would you say that I'm done right now? Hmm. If you said no, you're right. Remember last time we learned about negative space. That means that I want to fill in my picture all the way to the edges of my page. I want to keep going until I don't have any more room to go. So I'm going to keep adding these circles to my giant pattern of circles. I'm starting to run out of room on the bottom here. And I'm just going to keep repeating this and changing the color slightly and then repeating that pattern over and over and over. And it is a little bit of work, but watch how much better my picture looks if I complete all of it, if I fill in all the negative space. And the couple of reasons I wanna do that is one, it does make my picture look much, much better. I'm able to get more colors into my pattern. And two, I want people to know that I'm finished when they look at it. If I didn't complete my negative space all the way around and all the way to the edges, People might be confused about whether I'm still working on my picture or whether it's done and ready to be viewed. Oops, did I do that light yellow over here? Here we go. Light, 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 light. And I think I'm out of room over here on the right, but I can squeeze in maybe one or two more rows all the way on this side. And that is a really nice looking abstract picture. So after you've done your abstract painting, and it could be just a variety of shapes, any shape you'd like. They could be lines that are repeated over and over. Definitely try to use some different colors or if you're feeling really creative and you'd like to make a picture that uses just one color and different shapes, kind of like that last picture of Alma Thomas's we looked at, you could try that as well. Now, if you're working today and you start to get confused or maybe you forgot what you were doing, that's okay, that happens. You can always re-watch the video by clicking that button that says view instructions all the way at the top. After you've completed your painting though, I'd like you to look all the way over here on the right. There's a green check mark and clicking that green check mark will tell me that your work is complete. And when you click that, I'm clicking it right now, it will say uploading and then you'll see your finished painting on your Seesaw feed. And this is exactly what I'll see, and I'll be able to comment on that and let you know how you did. Now, I know some of you might have a hard time painting in Seesaw, and maybe you'd like to draw this picture with some crayons and paper. You could photograph it with a phone or a tablet, or maybe even your laptop camera, and then you could upload that picture as well. If you're doing this um, at home or at school, and you'd just like to follow along for fun, stay tuned because I'll show you how you can do this same thing using just paper and crayons. I can't wait to see what you create, and I'll see you next time. All right, scholars. Now that we've seen how the, we can create an abstract picture using the Seesaw painting tools, I want to show you a different way we can do it using a piece of paper, and I'm just going to be using a handful of crayons from my box of crayons I have at home. So if you are not working on a computer, or maybe you're doing this in the classroom, or maybe on a phone in the park, uh, depending on where you're doing your learning, um, there are a lot of different ways to create abstract art. So one thing I want to think about is what kinds of shapes do I want to use while creating my abstract picture? 
Almatomans often use squares, um, sometimes arranging them in circular patterns or in stripes, but we also saw those ones that were really, really interesting shapes. That rainbow colored picture with all of those different types of squiggles in it was a really excellent way to make an abstract picture. Now, because we've learned about negative space, I also want to make sure that I try to cover as much of my paper as possible. So one thing I'm going to do, and this is a neat trick if you're using crayons, is if you have any broken crayons in your box, I like to peel the paper off these and then actually use the side of the crayon to color. And let me show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to set these crayons down. I'm going to start just by making some nice, big, blue rectangles, just by kind of sliding the edge of my crayon. You have to do it a little harder than you would normally color. And I'm going to get some nice big blue rectangles in there, kind of almost like they're going down the page here in a diagonal line. And I think that's a good way to start my picture. That's a nice way for me to start building an abstract pattern. After that, I can even do um, these blue stripes. I'm going to use this same crayon and I'm just going to make a blue stripe kind of coming out from the middle of each of these rectangles. And already, this is kind of an interesting abstract picture. It doesn't really look like anything. It makes me think of the keys of, of a piano a little bit, but that's about it. But what I can do to help fill up the rest of this space is start to use these other colors I have and drawing shapes. I think I'm gonna stick with rectangles and see what I can do by using purple, blue, green, and orange. Now, Coloring an entire piece of paper takes a long time, and I don't want you guys to have to sit and watch me color in slow motion. So I'm going to activate my magic powers for the first time this year, and I'm actually going to speed up my coloring a little bit. So watch carefully. I'm going to complete this entire piece of paper in just a few seconds. Are you ready? One, two, three. And now you can see that my image is complete. Now, even though I didn't color every single little scrap of white paper showing through, I put enough of these rectangles and squares and lines in there so that those little pieces of negative space in between almost make their own shape and their own lines. And this is a very interesting picture to look at. And because it's abstract, it doesn't really matter whether I look at it in this direction, which kind of makes me think of cars on a busy street, or in this direction, which almost has a up and down movement, almost like rain coming down on a stormy day. So whichever way you decide to make your abstract image, whatever shapes and colors you use, it doesn't really matter. One of the most important things you can do though to make your picture look good and make sense is try to utilize the same shapes over and over and over and try to use patterns of shapes and colors just so that someone knows that you did this on purpose, that you had a plan ahead of time. You don't want your paper to look scribble scrabbly, so while you're creating your abstract art, Definitely have that idea and maybe, just like I did, kind of repeat some of your ideas over and over throughout the page, just like Alma Thomas would have while painting her abstract work. I can't wait to see what you guys come up with and post any abstract work that you have on Seesaw so I can like it and comment. Thank you very much.